collapsed on this territory before. A police officer hospitalised with COVID-19 after working at an anti-lockdown protest highlights the need for the police to receive priority vaccines, his force has said. This is a Dorset police officer who was present at the rally in Bournemouth where another officer was spat at and being treated now for a suspected blood clot on his lung after becoming unwell on Tuesday night. I mean, this is despicable stuff. We've talked about the, the spitting aspect before, but this is another aspect of it. Dorset Police Federation have said they are supporting his family and the group's chair has stated his hospitalisation is a stark reminder of the extra risks our officers are facing, adding the government are to blame for failing to prioritise police in the vaccine rollout. Let's speak with Shay Donald, who's, of course, the National Vice Chair of the Police Federation. Afternoon to you, Shay. And lots of people calling for this. I've heard your chair call for this. I've heard Cressida Dick call for this. Is it likely to happen? Hi, good afternoon, Ian. Um, the short answer is we don't know. Um, we, we, we've been very, very public on this point um, because uh, government hasn't been to um, if and when this is going to happen. Um, we, we've been told that plenty of discussions that have been uh, taking place. Um, everything seems to defer back to decisions made by JCBI. Um, but as yet, we've got no confirmation that any occupations are going to be um, prioritised beyond um, the, uh, the first four um, vulnerabilities that have been identified. Now, just to be absolutely clear, what we're not saying is that police officers um, are here to jump the queue. Um, we absolutely understand that those most vulnerable in society um, rightfully uh, get vaccinated first. But government have got to start having conversations and be open and transparent about when they are going to address um, dealing with uh, occupational groups such as policing. And the story you just alluded to that happened in Dorset is, is, not, um, is not one in isolation. The week before, we had an exact same incident take place in Cambridgeshire. You know, we, we're, dealing with, we're dealing with individuals who are weaponizing COVID yep. against our members. And more importantly, um, you know, police officers aren't immune to contracting this virus. And all the more we see... Um, decreased uh, uh, levels, sorry, increased levels of, of, of sickness and abstraction as a direct relation of contracting coronavirus. And this inhibits our ability to perform, the, perform our role to keep the public safe and more importantly to keep our members safe. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've spoken many times, Shay, on that, this issue of assaults on, on police and, you know, we could scratch our heads forever as to, you know, it's taken, a, li legally speaking, a little more seriously than it previously was. And I think most mm -hmm. of us would argue still doesn't go far enough. This is a, a whole new territory, of course, you know, because you've got the assault in the, the spitting of an officer. But of course, it comes mm -hmm. with a slightly different context now. You know, COVID-19 is out there and these people are using that, you know, almost making the point as they spit at officers, that that's what they're trying to do. You would think it would just be a simple no brainer that frontline services like the police would be automatically on a list to get a vaccination well yeah i mean it is a no-brainer unfortunately um there are people who are dragging their feet to come to a logical conclusion on this um it's it's, it's like i said this is never about jumping the queue mm. this is never about pushing in front of someone who's um, more vulnerable due to complicated medical conditions or their age. Yeah. But this is about recognising the unique role of policing, the fact that we do get up close and personal um, and hands-on yeah. on certain occasions with individuals. And we're also going from houses to houses to houses. You know, we, we are effectively super spreaders of this virus by the very nature of the role and responding to, to numerous incidents. So it's just right that government acknowledge this and accept that they're going to have to prioritise occupations yeah. and policing should definitely be right at the top of that list.